Hi, I'm Diasha. This teacher guide is about our Mindset and Learn series of lessons on transverse pulses and waves. In this guide, we tell you what the series of lessons is about and how it links to the curriculum. We also discuss ideas for using the lessons with your learners. You may want to make notes, so have pencil and paper ready. There are six lessons in the series in which we investigate pulses and waves moving through a spring. During these lessons, we identify characteristics of both a transverse pulse and transverse waves, explain and analyze wave motion, and explore the wave properties of refraction, reflection, and interference. This series of lessons links to the core knowledge strand of waves, sound and light. We have chosen to address the themes transverse pulses on a string or spring and transverse waves in the series. We have shown that waves can be found in many different contexts but have focused on pulses and waves moving through a slinky spring. In this series we have addressed assessment standards related to learning outcomes 1 and learning outcome two. The learning outcomes and assessment standards for each lesson are stated at the beginning of each video lesson in the series. In addition, lesson outcomes linked to these are also given for each lesson. We have chosen to investigate both transverse pulses and transverse waves in this series because they are so closely related. We start by investigating pulses first and then apply what we have discovered to waves. In this series, we have aimed to show clear demonstrations of both transverse pulses and transverse waves. We have used special slow motion sequences of these demonstrations to analyze the characteristics, motion and properties of pulses and waves. The analysis of real images helps to develop the important concepts through inquiry. This series is linked to the theme of motion too. We apply the skills of graphing to analyze the graphs of wave motion. In these graphs, we have analyzed both the motion of the particle and the motion of the pulse or wave moving through the medium. The success of these video lessons depends on the way you use them in your classroom. We suggest that you watch the lessons yourself as part of your planning. To get the full benefit of the lessons, your learners need to engage actively with the concepts presented. So, when you preview the videos, think about how to introduce each lesson and what follow-up activities will be useful. Also, watch out for places in the video where you could pause to have a class discussion or ask learners to complete an activity or solve a problem posed in the video. We have used this pause icon to suggest some of these places to you. As you watch each lesson, make a note of materials and other resources you might need to bring to the class. For example, you may need slinkies of different densities to demonstrate refraction. Assessment is an important part of teaching and learning, and the lessons provide opportunities for a range of different types of assessment. When you pause the video for learners to do an activity, you can assess their understanding of key ideas in the video and adjust your lesson plan if necessary. The task provided at the end of each lesson is always linked to at least one of the lesson outcomes and thus provides you with a useful assessment opportunity. In this lesson, we begin by looking at different waves in everyday contexts. We show a pulse moving through a slinky spring and use these images to build a definition of the term pulse. We have inserted a pause so that your learners can use their observations to build their own definition and then compare this with ours. We then use the same method to build a definition of a wave too. The crucial point of this lesson, which is carried through the whole series, is that there are two different types of motion taking place in a pulse or wave, 
the motion of the particles and the motion of the disturbance through the medium. We show these different motions by attaching a ball to a spring and by using animations of pulses and waves. We also define the terms amplitude, pulse length and wavelength in this lesson. The focus of lesson 2 is on investigating relationships between wavelength, period, frequency and velocity of the wave. Your learners will have the opportunity to use these relationships to solve problems during the lesson and in the task given at the end of the lesson. At the beginning of our third lesson, we show that the motion of a pendulum bob is exactly the same as the motion of a particle in a medium that has been disturbed by transverse pulse or wave. We use a motion sensor to collect data about the position of the bob during a certain time interval and from this data position versus time graph is displayed on a laptop screen. We then analyze this graph and use it to sketch a velocity versus time graph. We suggest that you get your learners to use this graph to draw the acceleration versus time graph by themselves. They can then check their answers with those shown on the video. In lesson 4, we focus on the behavior of pulses at a boundary. We start by investigating what happens when two different springs are joined together. We observe refraction and then use the law of conservation of energy to explain why the velocity of the wave changes when the medium changes. This will give your learners the chance to revise concepts they have learned in the theme of gravity and mechanical energy. We also investigate the reflection of a pulse from a fixed end and a free end. The use of slow motion video sequences and animation will help your learners analyze what happens in each of these situations. In lesson 5, we investigate what happens when two half pulses meet in the same part of the medium. This lesson clearly shows both destructive and constructive interference. We use this evidence to introduce the principle of superposition. Although this statement is quite long, we break it down and apply it to an example. The task in this lesson will give learners the chance to apply this principle to a simple example. In our final lesson of the series, we show what happens when two waves interfere in a rubber cord that has a fixed end and a free end. We examine the standing wave pattern and show how it changes as the frequency of the vibrator changes. There's a set of lesson notes for this video series on our website. These notes give a summary of the key points of each lesson and the tasks and suggested task answers. More detailed teacher support for this series, including additional ideas for assessing your learners' progress toward the assessment standards, is also available on the website. We hope this teacher guide has given you a useful overview to the series and will help you to use the mindset resources when introducing the concepts of transverse pulses and transverse waves to your learners. Look out for the series on geometrical optics that follows on from the series. Goodbye.